If you're considering surgery, if you're reflux symptoms, you want to make sure that you have the right diagnosis and plan before surgery. So watch this video to understand how we evaluate stubborn GERD to decide if surgery may improve your symptoms. GERD symptoms are common. In fact, they're so common that the symptoms alone are not sufficient to diagnose GERD. And so if we're considering surgery for atypical symptoms or severe symptoms, before we do that, we really want to make sure that we have the right diagnosis. And so we're going to discuss a number of tests that help us to arrive at a decision to predict that a reflux surgery will really help you. Foremost is an upper endoscopy. And here I'm paying careful attention to the esophagus for evidence that it is being injured by severe reflux. They may take the form of severe esophagitis with ulcers and deep erosions, a condition called Barrett's esophagus that's a precursor to cancer, which we discuss in a separate video that's linked below, or esophageal cancer. If those are present, then there's a very strong case that you need to have surgery. Now, obviously with the esophageal cancer, we're gonna go in a completely different direction. But with those other conditions, they make a case for considering an anti-reflux surgery to stop that injury to the esophagus. If the upper endoscopy shows a fairly normal esophagus, but symptoms are uncontrolled, then we need to do another test to see if there's abnormal acid in the esophagus. We have two ways to do this. One is a wireless device that's placed in the esophagus during an endoscopy. The second is a tube that's placed through the nose down into the esophagus where it can measure acid. In either case, what we're looking for is an abnormal level of acid in the esophagus. When a patient has typical symptoms of reflux and they have an abnormally high level of acid despite using a proton pump inhibitor, then they are a very good candidate to have anti-reflux surgery and expect to have a relief of those symptoms. While it sounds preferable to have a wireless-based test, the nasal catheter test allows us to perform an additional study to detect a different type of reflux. This is called impedance testing and it can detect non-acidic reflux. This is especially helpful when a patient doesn't respond to a proton pump inhibitor because not all reflux is acidic and their symptoms may be driven by other irritants of the esophagus. Those won't be detected with a plain old pH test, but they will be detected with impedance testing, which makes this a very helpful additional test to consider in specific patients. Esophageal manometry is a test that records the movement of the esophagus and the lower esophageal sphincter. It is a very important test to conduct before having anti-reflux surgery because we need to know if your esophagus is strong enough to not have a very concerning side effect of trouble swallowing after the surgery. It could also be that your symptoms are because of a poorly moving esophagus. It might be discoordinated or weak or not moving at all, and that is extremely important to know ahead of surgery. Esophageal manometry will show that about 60% of patients with GERD have a weak lower esophageal sphincter, and that's permitting a lot of reflux. And the remainder of patients will often see that they have a normal tone to their lower esophageal sphincter, but it is opening much more readily. In either case, we can see that by tightening up that sphincter, we can expect the patient will have improved symptoms. Finally, there are radiology and nuclear medicine studies that can be helpful to evaluate reflux. An esophagram is a specialized x-ray of the esophagus. It can be helpful for surgical planning to determine the length of the esophagus and look for unexpected findings like a diverticulum. It's also helpful to see the length that reflux travels up the esophagus. A nuclear medicine study called a gastric emptying study measures how long the stomach empties. And this can be a key test for patients whose symptoms are a little bit atypical. They have a lot of bloating and fullness, and they don't so much have reflux and regurgitation, but nausea and vomiting, and they actually may have delayed gastric emptying that is the root cause of their problem. Doing a reflux surgery on this patient could cause really severe exacerbation of their bloating. And so again, it's important information to have ahead of the surgery to make a final surgical plan. I hope that this video has helped you understand the different tests that GI doctor may want to do to evaluate whether you may be a good candidate for anti-reflux surgery. Please subscribe to the channel for more information about GERD and how it's managed as well as other GI conditions. Thank you and be safe.